It's all about pot roast today, braised pot roast. What exactly is pot roast? Well, you take an inexpensive cut of beef, braise it in a liquid to break down all those tough connective tissues, and end up with fork tender meat in a mouth-watering, rich gravy and tender vegetables, all cooked in one pot. Braising at a low temperature and cooking it slow is the key to really tender meat, which happens to be the complete opposite of cooking steak or an expensive cut of meat. And that's the key. It's the long, slow cooking time that makes this meat so tender. This classic comfort dish is not only easy to make, but I promise you, it will be one of your all-time favorites. Okay, so you're gonna see that I have actually two little pot roasts here. And the reason I have two little ones is because that's what I had in the freezer. They're little, but they add up to about five pounds of meat. So if you've got one big one, four or five pounds, or two little ones like I do, both will work. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the salt, pepper, and the Italian seasoning, and we're gonna rub them all over the meat. I gotta coat them really well. And there's different types of meat you can use. There's different types of roast. You can use oven roast, you can actually use um, brisket. Um, the more fat, the more flavor. And the cheaper cuts are the better ones to use. I've rubbed that spice in really well on all sides. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got a tablespoon of olive oil in the pot. And I'm going to bring that up to a medium, medium high to get that oil nice and hot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sear each side of the meat. So we're just going to wait for that to come up to so it's really hot and then put the meat in. Okay, our oil is nice and hot, so we're going to put the meat in. And we're just going to let that set. We're going to let it set for about two minutes and get a nice crust. Then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing. All right, we've pulled the meat out. We've got all this beautiful brown at the bottom of the pot. That's just gonna add more flavor. So now what I'm gonna do is gonna be, it's very, very hot, so be very careful. We're gonna add in some olive oil. And we're gonna add in the onion. We're gonna add in half of the celery. The other half's gonna go in later. I'm eyeballing it. And half of the carrots. The garlic. Give that a nice toss. And we're going to let these vegetables go for a few minutes, get them to soften up, and then we'll hit the next step. Okay, they're just starting to soften up now. Now we're going to add in the rest of the salt, the pepper, and the rest of the Italian seasoning. So we're going to let that go. Another few more minutes till they soften up a little bit more. Okay, the vegetables are coming along really well. And you see those little bits at the bottom? It's actually called fond. But it's those little brown bits, and they're actually starting to come up now, which, and they're getting into the vegetables. You can see that. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to add the wine, and then let that go for another five minutes. Give it a stir, and let it get happy. The wine has melded into the vegetables. If you don't want to use wine, just add a cup of beef broth instead and do the exact same thing. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're going to add beef broth and flour. And I'm going, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the flour into the beef broth, mix it with a whisk, and then pour it in, okay? The reason I'm combining the flour and the beef broth 
is so we don't get lumps. I probably could have used a bigger whisk, but you get the idea. We're getting there. Okay, it's all mixed. So now we're going to slowly pour that in. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just make sure that's all nestled, the, the beef is nestled right into the pan. We want to make sure the liquid is about halfway up the meat. As it's cooking, it's going to reduce. And we might need to add a little bit of more broth or water through the cooking process, and that's okay. So now what we're going to do, we're going to, we've got it still at medium, we're going to cover it keep it a jar just a little bit when it comes to a boil we're going to bring it back down to low and then we're going to let it go for about four four and a half hours until it's pork tender okay it's been a couple of hours let's have a look Ooh, look at how nice that looks okay so i flipped the meat a couple of times and the liquid is actually looking pretty good at this point, so I don't need to add any more. So, I'm gonna flip it one more time. And now I'm gonna add in the rest of the veg. So, here's the rest of the, whoops, Here's the rest of the carrots and the celery. So those are gonna go in. And I actually ended up adding another carrot and another celery because I've got quite a big pot here. So it's up to you. If you wanna add a little bit more veg, that's great. And potatoes. And now I'm gonna nestle these all into the, the gravy sauce here. I'm gonna bring it up, bring the temperature up a little bit because I wanna bring it up to a very low boil. And I'm gonna submerge all of the vegetables into the gravy as much as I can. And then we're gonna cover it again, leave the little lid ajar just a little bit, stir it every hour, give the meat a flip, and then it'll be done. It's been just about four hours. And the smell coming from this pot is making my mouth water. So, well, just to kind of recap, we, I just stirred this periodically over the last four hours, gave the roast a flip a few times also, and then put the veggies in, the balance of the veggies in about an hour ago. So you might ask, what does fork tender actually mean? Well, it means just that fork tender. So I'm going to actually check and check my meat to see if it actually is pork tender. So I'm going to put my fork in. Oh yeah. yeah, I don't know if you can see that. I think you can. It's ready to come out. So I've got my stove on very, very low and I've got a plate right beside me and we're going to very carefully take out the meat. So remember, I've done two because I have two little guys. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually let this sit out for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, we're going to put the cover back on and just let the rest of the, the liquids just get happy. What we're going to do next is we're going to take the beef apart, throw it back into the gravy, cover it up, let it get happy for about five minutes, and then we're going to be ready to eat. Finally, all right, we're just gonna start pulling this beef apart. Now look at how easy this is. Oh my goodness. I actually wanna just take a bite right now, but I won't. Now you can break it apart as much or as little as you want. And as you go through, 
you may see some visible chunks of fat that you'll want to remove. And as we pull it apart, I'm just going to put it back in the gravy. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're just going to leave that on low, let it go for about five minutes, ten minutes max, and then we're ready to eat. That was four and a half hours well spent. I mean, we didn't have to do anything. We were just able to smell the entire thing. Four and a half hours of torture for me. I was smelling it. Okay, so guess what? Yeah, you probably have a pretty good idea of what we're having for dinner tonight. So, this is it. This is one of my favorite recipes of all time. And, and if you try this, it will be yours. If you like beef, um, well, that's enough. Yeah, can I just get into this? This is braised pork tender, very hot from what I can see. It's going to burn himself. I think I'll just wait just a couple more seconds before I dive in. This is so tender. You would think this is like Wagyu beef that's been serenaded its whole life. It's just unbelievably good. The flavors, crazy. This is wildly inexpensive for what you get. Like, there's virtually nothing not to like. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to give you a tip. If you're smart, like we are, <laughs> you're not going to bite, your recipe says it's for six, mm -hmm. and you're not going to bite the other four. And the reason is that after you have this gorge on this tonight, <laughs> Tomorrow, you can have it again. And what we're going to have, suggestion, fresh baguette. Cut it in half. Put this beef on top. Put a little cheese, some hot peppers. Broil it in the oven. Oh, oh my God, it's ecstasy two nights in a row. <laughs> this recipe is that good. And you will never believe, you will never believe that you can eat that for like four bucks a person. It's just crazy good. What do you think? <laughs> I haven't had any chance to talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, so, you know, the nice thing about this is there is lots of leftovers. It's freezer friendly. And, I mean, you can omit the potatoes and you can do them on mashed potatoes, um, yeah. which, we, which we do. Or keep the potatoes in and there's nothing wrong with double dipping on the potato. But, I mean, there's a, it, this turns into a lot of great things and it, it really is. I, the family, um, great family favorite.